Hey guys, MCN Mike here. Welcome to the final Retro Vember video. I know this is being uploaded in December, so it's more like Retro Sember? I'll explain why this video is later than usual at the end. For now, let's get to the subject at hand. You could say I was building up to this video thanks to the hint I gave in the last Retro Vember video when I said that the script was under construction. Founded in the 1930s, LEGO is a massive toy company that got its start in Billund, Denmark. With the release of its first ever set featuring building instructions in 1966, LEGO is a brand that has captivated generations, yours truly included. If there's something out there, just anything, someone has probably recreated it with LEGOs. However, toys aren't the only market LEGO has invaded. Since 1995, with the release of LEGO Fun to Build for the Sega Pico system, LEGO has thrown their hat into the video game market. Before getting into the LEGO games we know and love today, I'm going to give an honorable mention to a LEGO game that isn't necessarily like the games I'll be talking about today. Back in 2010, LEGO made an MMO called LEGO Universe. Loyal fans who have watched me for the past two years may remember when I made a video about LEGO Universe as part of my Dead MMO series. While a bit has changed since that video went up, I still recommend watching it if you want a brief history of LEGO Universe. Link to that video will be in the eye icon in the top right corner of the screen. For mobile users, link will be in the description down below. Without further delay, let's talk about LEGO video games. By far, the most well-known LEGO games are the ones involving licensed properties. The first of these was LEGO Star Wars The Video Game, released in 2005. Okay, well, technically, the first one was LEGO Creator Harry Potter, but this one was the first one that adapted the formula that all LEGO games continued to follow. Speaking of formulas, let's talk about that. What is this LEGO game formula that I'm speaking of? Allow me to elaborate. If you pick up a LEGO video game, Odds are, you'll have the following features consistent across all the licensed property games. Studs are the currency, used to unlock characters. Linear level design, collectible gold bricks, minikit pieces, or similar equivalent. There's probably a few other features I'm missing, but that basically sums up the fundamentals of a LEGO video game. For this video though, I'm going to talk about a few LEGO games that I either remember fondly, or games that really stood out in the LEGO game franchise. After that, I'll touch on what makes these games so great in my opinion, even though new installments don't really change many features. The first games I want to talk about are the LEGO Harry Potter games. I know, JK Rowling isn't exactly the world's most favorite person. That doesn't deter from the fact that these games were fun for me, so don't mistake this as me supporting J.K. Rowling's personal values. These were originally separated into years 1 through 4 and 5 through 7, but were later bundled in the LEGO Harry Potter collection. What I will say about these games right off the bat is that the dedication to sticking to the source material is abundantly clear. Most of the core gameplay has you using spells that you've seen in the movies like Wingardium Leviosa for levitating objects and Lumos for shining a light in dark places among other spells. Besides spells, the world was really well constructed to accommodate this style of gameplay as most places have you using spells to solve puzzles. By this point, the developers at TT Games had a few LEGO games under their belt, having worked with the Star Wars, Indiana Jones, and Batman franchises by this point. With this experience, it only made sense that these games followed the same standard of quality. However, there are some gripes I have with the aforementioned quality. I know I said the world was built creatively to support the gameplay. While I still stand by that, I will say the visuals aren't exactly something to write home about. A trend I noticed that earlier LEGO games fall into is having your core block building mechanics and some LEGO structures present in the levels, while at the same time abandoning that and putting more lower quality realistic structures in the background. 
I know this was probably done to save time, but look at this screenshot from one of the game's bonus levels. This baby food colored substance is supposed to kill the player when they jump into it, implying that you're not supposed to go there. Let me ask you something though. What is this supposed to be? Is it quicksand? Dirt? A pool of f***ing hummus? Again, I get this was either done to save time, or the devs figured that not absolutely everything had to appear to be made from LEGO, but this just doesn't look good when put next to the colorful LEGO blocks. Fortunately, this is part of the quality of life changes that the developers made. More on that later. Aside from some graphical setbacks, the game also had a couple glitches. By far the most infamous glitch was in the clock tower, and I fell victim to it when trying to 100% this game as a kid. In this room, you're supposed to do a few things to make a gold brick appear. However, unbeknownst to the player, there's a set order that you need to do these things in, in order to properly set off the chain of events. Not doing the tasks in this set order will cause the gold brick to not appear at all. As a kid, I didn't know this, and it was my last gold brick I needed to fully complete the game. I ended up calling WB Games about it, and they told me to send in my copy of the game. About a week later, I got it back and nothing was changed. Thankfully, this was patched in the collection. So yeah, LEGO Harry Potter was great in its dedication to replicating ideas and themes from the licensed property it was based on, but it wasn't necessarily visually impressive and had a few glitches here and there. Otherwise, I'd say there was a decent amount of content, both in the amount of story levels, as well as bonus content, the selection of iconic playable characters like Station Guard, and collectibles to find like House Crests and Gold Bricks. If you want to give these games a try, you could pick up the collection for about $20 on Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, and PS4. A game that a lot of people point to when they think of LEGO games is LEGO Star Wars The Complete Saga. I personally own the Platinum Hits Edition on Xbox 360, and believe me when I say that this game is actually decent. Not only does it faithfully recreate character settings and themes from the source material like other LEGO games, it just has so much to it. This game tells the story of the first six Star Wars movies in its own LEGO-ish style, with each episode containing six levels each. Let's run down some numbers just to show the scope of this game. 160 plus characters including Indiana Jones for some reason, 160 gold bricks, 36 levels spread across six episodes plus another six bonus levels, 360 mini kits to find in all the levels total, and 44 vehicles to purchase or get via in-game cheat codes. Once again, we see faithful adaptations of concepts from Star Wars make their appearance, and it feels like all the main playable characters have their own use. Sometimes there are doors that only robot characters can open, or maybe there's a pile of bricks that you have to use the force to reassemble. Perhaps you could see a minikit that's just barely out of reach, so you switch to Jar Jar Binks to jump really high and get it. That's probably the only time Jar Jar would actually be useful in the Star Wars franchise, let's be real here. Even the combat is very between characters. Of course, you have your staples, like, you know, the characters that shoot blasters. Yes, very creative, I know. But as a Jedi, you're able to deflect laser blasts from droids with your lightsaber. In addition to that, you can also use the Force as an evil character to instantly kill characters and be a total dick to everybody. It's safe to say that when it comes to LEGO games, TT Games doesn't mess around with both core content, dedication to replicating the licensed properties they work with, as well as bonus content. Of course, 100 percent these games is nowhere near similar to completing, say, a Dynasty Warriors game, which... You know, if the completionist video about Hyrule Warriors is anything to go off of, I mean, that alone took a thousand plus hours. This doesn't even compare to those games. However, there is enough content to occupy you for hours if you choose to fully complete it. As a kid, I ended up 100%ing both LEGO Harry Potter games by taking a JPEG of the game's map and crossing out areas I had already completed. I was that dedicated and... Probably a little stupid as a kid. Okay, so I sang a lot of praise about LEGO games, and I probably sound like I'm saying LEGO games should be nominated for Game of the Year or whatever. But 
while they are fun, I don't think they even come close to that level of prestige. Potential accolades aside, I now want to talk about what I think makes these games so good and so much fun to play, even though they're all similar in core gameplay. I'll give you a hint, I just told you. The gameplay, which I just described as being present in every LEGO game, is the biggest reason behind its success. Let's start with LEGO as a company. They've been making toy sets for kids of all ages, you know, the ones that don't swallow the small parts, for over 60 years. It's safe to say that LEGO appeals to people of all ages. Now, take a look at the gameplay in these video games. The levels are very linear, and your objective is always right in front of you. The combat is simplistic, requiring only a few presses of a single button. Dying in the game is basically a non-issue as you just respawn instantly. The only real consequence is dropping studs, which is the game's currency. If you're trying to get the true Jedi rank or the equivalent in whatever LEGO game you're playing, then yeah, it's a little bit of an inconvenience. This simple gameplay, plus the application of familiar LEGO building concepts and the family-friendly nature of the games, is what makes these so popular. But Mike, I hear you saying, haven't the games changed at all in the past 10 years? Yes, they certainly have. A good example of a modern LEGO video game is LEGO Batman 3. This game has 250 gold bricks, over 150 characters, and a huge interconnected world with various locations from the DC Universe, each with their own gold bricks and characters to find and purchase. Aside from content, the core gameplay has seen some improvements over the years. Now when walking, you automatically start running after a few seconds. This really helps with big areas, namely the lantern planets from the Green Lantern universe that you travel to in the post game of LEGO Batman 3. In general, the controls just feel a lot more free. When I was playing the original LEGO Batman, I noticed the controls felt a bit tight and weren't as simple to move around with. I know I'm being incredibly vague with the gameplay improvements, however, that's just what quality of life improvements are. Subtle changes to the gameplay that improve the overall experience. With the LEGO Star Wars Skywalker Saga on the way, a game that supposedly features all nine LEGO Star Wars episodes, or I guess regular Star Wars episodes, but LEGOized, I can't wait to see LEGO games continue to stick to their high standard of quality. With TT Games taking care of the core development, I have good faith in the future of LEGO video games. Thanks for watching the last Retro November video. This was supposed to come out a month ago, and I dearly apologize. I thought I could produce high quality scripted content while pursuing a full academic career and balancing a part time job on top of that. It's definitely a lot harder than it seems, especially when I try to force deadlines on myself. As a New Year's resolution, I hope to improve my time management with content creation, as well as putting academics in front of everything like I always do. Despite this video being out later than I wanted, I want to thank you guys for sticking with me this year, and here's to more years of talking about video games. I'll see you guys in the next one.